Welcome everyone to another Project M commentary. We are continuing down the line of presidents, and next up we are at president number six, John Quincy Adams. He was president from 1825 to 1829. John Quincy Adams was the son of the second president, John Adams. Ironically, his longest lasting legacy from him was the Monroe Doctrine. When he was Secretary of State, Adams was first to have formulated the view that the U.S. was entitled to police the whole of the Americas and to see any European interference as an act of aggression toward itself. It was a warning to the world in diplomatic language, but Quincy Adams was not meek or easygoing like he may have seemed. John Quincy Adams' accession to presidency was very unusual. In fact, talking about his election to office seems misplaced. Many presidents could be said to have left office under a cloud. Quincy was unusual because he seemed to have started that way. During elections, during the elections, none of the five candidates had won an outright majority, though Andrew Jackson had the largest share at 43.1% of the poll against Adams' 30.5. But Henry Clay, but the lowest, was forced to drop out of the race. He, an old adversary of Jackson's, threw his weight behind Adams, who was elected accordingly. So, qu quite a big batch of support to help him through to the presidency. Of course, Jackson and his supporters weren't happy, and they said that Adams stole the presidency. It was the end of the era of good feeling. Even the people who didn't like Jackson much didn't feel easy about a president's son becoming president. Some feared the start of a Euro-style monar monarchical dynasty. John Quincy Adams was grand and haughty in manner, and did nothing to stop such critics. He showed no sign of humility as he went on a far-reaching, free-spending policy agenda. Adams wasn't personally corrupt, but people didn't feel he had a reason for embarking on a big ambition to improve infrastructure, including important road and canal building projects. So, you could say that for that, he did a pretty good job, it's just the people weren't happy about him going so far out of the way to build all these things. You know, without really Congress's approval or anything. Or any special going-ons or decisions about the spending. Anyways, people weren't won over either by the way his sons acted. George Washington Adams, a womanizer and an alcoholic, was found drowned at 28. Apparently, it was suicide. And John Adams II, really end up with the repeating names, was also an alcoholic and died young too at 31. In hindsight, could have following a distinguished grandfather and a father been too much pressure? But to others of their time, their behavior was more of that of overprivileged crown princes. Anyways, one last thing in short, because I could care less, or understand the logic of it all, I might as well explain this, which happened around the president's sons. When First Lady L Louise Adams' niece was orphaned, Mary Catherine Helen was brought to live in the White House, free-spirited at 13, and became a frightening teenage femme fatale, as in a woman who would pretty much bring you to your doom. So, and it, this made her male cousins wild with lust and jealousy. Nasty, but you know what those times were. Later, she became engaged to George Washington Adams, though n this is the one that died at age 28. Though not before she broke the heart of his younger brother, Charles Francis Adams. George wanted to postpone the marriage until he finished college. Good decision, good decision. But John Adams II, President's second son, should have been in college and at Harvard, but he was expelled and came home to serve as his dad's personal secretary. It wasn't a, really a real job, and it gave him just enough time, plenty of time, to flirt with an intrigued Mary, whereas George was clearly away. Louise was frantic about the couple waiting for too long before John and Adams and Mary were to start flirting. Eventually, Louise got her way, and a wedding was hastily arranged. Two egos were shattered. Ah, jeez. So, honestly, just a whole bunch of dumb love crap that started with just a bunch of cousin family incest. Heartbreak, heartbreak everywhere. Anyways, overall, I don't think Quincy Adams was any more efficient as president than his father. 
Though, I guess you could give him some credit for moving the country ahead with building important projects that would help transportation become much easier for the future generation of America for that time. But he definitely wasn't a good parent, we all can say that much, and his family was just plain bizarre. Maybe his projects he set out to do were successful, like I said, but there wasn't really anything mentioning them, what exactly they were, that he did. But I don't know. He probably did a good job with trying to move the country forward in some degree. What do you think about John Quincy Adams? If there's any input you'd like to add, leave it in a comment, in the comment section below. Anyways, that's the end of the commentary. I hope you enjoyed. Comment, resubscribe, do whatever you want, your choice. And I'll see you with the next president. Cool.